drive for show, putt for dough. Today, I'm gonna to tell you everything you need to know about disc golf. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is talk about the discs themselves. You have putters, you have approaches, mid-ranges, approaches and mid-range are the same thing, and you have control drivers, and you have distance drivers, and also long distance drivers as well. Now let's talk about the numbers. All discs have numbers on them, or at least you can read about them online. Most of them conform to what I'm gonna tell you. Some of the manufacturers are a little different. Four numbers, three, four, zero, and zero. Now the first number, the three, is actually how difficult it is and the power you need to throw with to get the disc to perform like it is supposed to and was built to perform. That number, the lower it is, the easier it is to throw, but also the less amount of distance that you're going to get as well. So if you have the power, the higher the number, the first number, the farther you'll throw. The lower the number, the easier the disc is to throw, but the shorter distance you'll get also. The second number, four, that's the glide. If you have a high number, that means the disc will tend to glide. Not great for accuracy, but good for distance. So that's an important number too. They go as high as like six, seven, and uh, that's pretty impressive if you can get a disc to glide that much. These are not Frisbees. These are actually designed for disc golf. Different sport, so you need discs that have different characteristics. Don't go to the disc golf course with a regular 165 gram Frisbee or something like that. It's like playing golf with a tennis ball. Buy a starter set of these. It'll come with a putter, mid-range, and a driver. That's what you need. Now, the third number, zero. Well, that is actually the turn of the disc. Zero means it doesn't have any turn. If it has a number three, that means it has a high amount of turn and is overstable. If the number is negative, that means understable. Basically, if you're throwing a right-hand, backhand disc, understable means that the disc is going to fade off this way for you. It's not going to turn over the third number. When you throw it with some hyzer, a disc will sometimes turn over, straighten out, and then go, and then fade off. But a disc with a zero is gonna be pretty stable and is not gonna have too much turn. In other words, if you throw it like this, it might very well stay like that and then fade off at the end, and that is the fourth number here which is a zero on this disc too so it should not have a lot of fade most discs that you throw right hand backhand will tend to maybe turn up a bit and then fade off to the left and that is an overstable disc an understable disc that will have a negative number for the third number the higher that number i think understable discs are much better for beginners so get yourself some understable discs like a cobra that's a great understable mid-range and also something like a leopard that's a great beginner disc as well the leopard is a great disc there's also a leopard three and that one is a seven five negative two and one so this is an understable control driver seven is a medium amount of speed needed for this disc you might want to start with a mid-range something like the Cobra here. I'll pull out the King Cobra because it's got the numbers on it. The King Cobra here is a 4502. That means it's a mid range with a speed of 4, 5, it's got good glide. The 0 means that it's stable, and the 2 means that there is some fade at the end. So this one tends to be a stable disc, whereas this Cobra is a 4, 5, negative 2, 0. And that means it's easy to throw with the number four. It's got good glide with the number five. And the negative two means that it will turn over a bit. So you can throw it with some hyzer and then it'll straighten out. Now I flick most every shot. So that means that when I throw this disc, it's gonna start like this, just basically turn up and go straight at my target. So it's a very accurate disc and a good mid-range is something that everyone should have it's a good disc to start and just play the whole course with because it's definitely an all-around disc that'll help you with your game. If you throw too much disc, you'll have difficulty. In other words, if the first number is too high, you might have a lot of difficulty. And some people tend to compensate for those discs, which I'll talk about a little later, but you don't want to do that. Start off with an understable mid-range like the Cobra here 
and definitely look for that third number being negative. That will help you learn the sport of disc golf and throw like you should throw. Now what do I mean by throw like you should throw? Well, if you're flicking, for instance, sidearm, forehand flick, like I do, well, a natural stance is to go ahead and throw with the disc about like this. That is hyzer. Hyzer is a downward angle here, and then since it is an understable mid-range, like I said, when I give it the power and go straight, it will then turn up and go towards my target. Now, if it were anhyzer, in other words, I might throw it like this. Why would I throw the Cobra with Anheuser? That's up in the air like this. Why would I do that? Well, let's say I was here, for instance, and I wanted to get around this tree. Then I could go ahead and throw it at this angle and get around that way. Or let's take a real shot, for instance. I don't know if you can see it. There's a basket over here. So if I throw this with some Anheuser this way, it's going to turn a bit to the left and get me right at the basket. And that's exactly what it did. It held the angle and was able to go ahead and just keep turning around to the left. That's a good way to play a dog leg left. So when I talk about throwing like you should throw, well, here's the leopard. And if you're a right hand backhand player, well, you start like this and you give it some hyzer and then your disc should, when you throw it correctly, a disc like this leopard, seven, five, negative two, one, should go ahead and if you throw it with hyzer, it should turn up a bit and then maybe even keep turning and fade back. And that is the ideal throw with the leopard three. Wow, the weather is absolutely crazy today. It went from sunny to cloudy and now it's sprinkling a bit. And that's another great disc golf tip. Remember to bring a towel with you because it's great for getting dirt and mud off of the discs and also if they're wet it's great for drying them off and you need good grip to throw these discs well. Okay and here's another great tip for disc golf. When you go out and carry a lot of discs like many people do, I carry a medium amount I would say. I usually have 8 to 10 discs in my bag but when I shoot videos I have more. So right now I have 10 discs in my bag and 4 in the basket here that I'm talking about to tell you about these discs. So that's a total of 14. My point is, know how many discs you have, write your name and number on them, and you'll never lose a disc, and you'll know how many you came with, so you'll never leave one behind. Okay, I've talked about putters and mid-ranges with the Dart and the Cobra, and the Leopard 3 is a fairway control driver. That's a disc that you can get some distance with, but it's also easy to control. Therefore, it's called a fairway or control driver. That's what that means. Now we move into the distance drivers, like this Vulcan. Again, I like understable discs, so let's check out these numbers. Here we go. This Vulcan is a 13, 5, negative 4, and 2. Now 13, the first number, well, that is the speed. And it's very difficult to get a speed 13 disc to do what it's supposed to do if you don't have a lot of power. So don't even try something with the speed 13. Keep it under 10 definitely if you're a beginner. When you're an intermediate, maybe, depends on your power level. But this 13 disc here, well, it can go a very, very long way. Now that being said, there's some players out there that can probably throw this 450, 500 feet. When I throw this disc, my maximum distance on flat ground is usually close to 300, and that's with everything going perfectly. My average throw, I mean 220, you know, long throw is usually like 285. So don't expect to come out here and be a hero. I've been playing this game for a very, very long time, but also my distance has never been spectacular. So there's a lot of people out there with great distance, but distance is not everything. Remember my first shot in this video, drive for show, putt for dough. If you know how to do great approach shots, and also great putts, you can go a long way in disc golf, even if your drives aren't that long. So, okay, 13, five, negative four, and two. We talked about the speed, the five is the glide. That negative four means that it is understable, and the two means that it's got some fade at the end, just a bit. So for me, my ideal throw with this disc is actually sort of an S-curve. I can throw it with a bit of hyzer, 
and it'll straighten out and maybe even S-curve this way a bit and then fade off back to the right. So given the right fairway and the right technique and the right power to throw this disc, it can go a very long way with a nice S-curve. If you're throwing this disc right hand backhand, well, you give it some hyzer and then it straightens out, curves off this way and then back to the left. So those are the two directions for this disc, whether you're a forehand flick thrower, sidearm, or a right hand backhand thrower. Now, if you happen to be a left hand backhand thrower, say you're throwing like this, well, it's just exactly opposite. If you have a lot of power and you throw this with some hyzer, it should flip up, turn this way, and then back to the right. So the left-handed backhand throw is very much like the right-handed sidearm throw, and vice versa. If you flick with your left hand, well then, the disc should turn over this way and then fade off that way with an S-curve, and that is the same as a right-hand backhand. So right-hand backhand and left-hand forehand same pattern for the flight. Okay, now I've talked about what these discs do and what those numbers mean. Now let's go throw some. Okay, so number eight here at Bluemont, two different baskets. First one, 215 feet, and that blue one way back here on this side, just up right there. Well, that one's 344 feet. So two different distances and just really a straight shot. So this one is a good one to really show you how these discs fly with different characteristics. Here we go. Well, there you go. The Cobra, understable mid-range, one of my favorite discs. You can play the whole course with a disc like the Cobra, and you can putt with it. Went over 200 feet, just shy of the basket. Okay, the Vulcan, flippy, understable, and resulted in a nice turnover, an S-curve, giving me what for me is my maximum distance. Now, I don't have the distance of many players out there that can bomb like 350, 450 feet. My max throws, certainly under 300 feet, probably about 285, 290 max, and uh, that's just the way it goes. So I've got to make these discs work for me. The Speed 13 Vulcan is one of my longer throwing discs. You get that nice S curve, that's how you get your distance. And again, it's easier to throw an understable disc that turns over for you many times. Sometimes you can throw like an Anheuser bomb, which would be like this. Just let the overstable characteristics turn the disc around and you get maximum distance that way. But it's easier to throw an understable disc normal highs are flat. That way, it's just much easier on your body and an easier motion for your body to actually And Anyway, I'm still a ways away, probably right around 100 feet, maybe a little bit more. So what should I do to get there? Well, let's figure it out. Guess which disc that was? That's right, the Cobra. So, you can flick it, you can backhand it, you can basically do anything with it, and it really goes right where you put it. Now, bear in mind that mine is a very, very broken in older Cobra, so don't expect them to be that compliant to your every throw when you first get it. It needs to be broken in. That one's been broken in for years, probably decades. Now, a lot of people wonder why I don't backhand a shot like that that's maybe 100 120 feet. Well, the answer is, again, my flick is much more accurate for me, but here's what happens when I try to backhand the same shot. So I can do it with the backhand, but usually for my putting, as long as it's within like 40 feet, I don't mind backhanding it but when I get much outside of that, I think my flick is more accurate. So again, 
Don't listen to everybody else in the disc golf course. That's the first thing because everybody has different abilities. Everybody throws different ways. Everybody has different strengths and different weaknesses. Throw the way you throw and use the discs that you use. I was using definitely long range drivers to get some of those very close shots to the basket. And that's just because I know what they're going to do, how they're going to turn over, when they're going to fade. And I use that. You can see in my other videos, I make some crazy, crazy long shots with some discs that you wouldn't expect me to use. But again, know your discs, know what they do, and don't listen to anybody else. Now, a word about putting. Putting is definitely something that you need to practice. And it's a good idea to get a bunch of putters and then go ahead and practice. Most every disc golf course has a putting basket like this one where you can practice. This one has several and this one has kind of a game that goes around. You can putt from different lengths and that's great. That's what you want to do and you should do it before every round just like you should take some practice drives before every round and stretch. Stretch before and stretch after. Obviously the younger you are the less important that is but if you get into that habit it's good because when you get older stretching before and stretching after will definitely keep your body feeling better and keep you throwing better as well. Now, with putting, whatever stance you're comfortable with, you want to face the basket and you want to throw right towards the orange in the middle there. And sometimes I like to treat it like it's a person. Don't psych yourself out and get all, oh my God, it's basket, it's changed, it's going to fall out. You can throw a frisbee to your friend over there on the beach and get it to them pretty much every time, right? Well, this is the same sort of thing. So don't be intimidated. Throw right at the center of the basket. That's the way you do it. Number seven is just 181 feet, but you've got these tree hazards all the way on the right here. This is kind of an easy shot for a right hand backhand player. You just throw it with some hyzer and let it turn on down the fairway here. Probably with the mid range, if you're more of a beginner, probably a control driver that's uh, over stable would be good for you or maybe stable throw them with some hyzer. I'm going to use the Cobra here and get it to turn over and go right towards the basket, which is difficult to do with the flick because most flicks tend to fade off to the right. But I want this one to turn up and over and then go straight at the basket. Let's see if I can make that happen. Okay, so I'm choosing the disc and letting the disc work for me, just like you would in regular golf. You choose an iron or wood, that sort of thing. And disc golf is the same way. Mid-range that I knew was flippy, threw it up and let it just turn down the fairway, straight at the basket here, and great result, close enough for a putt. Bluemont number one, from the short tee here to the front basket, 160 feet. However, there's a longer basket there also. I really like the shorter basket, it's a fun shot. I'm gonna shoot that one, but I'm also gonna shoot to the blue basket from the blue tee, which is pro, and it's all the way back. Nope, not there, that's the white tee. All the way back here, that's where the blue tee is. So you've gotta come this way, around these trees and then all the way down to the basket 529 feet i'm going to shoot this both ways and show you how to do it and what discs you can use to make it happen let's start with short to short 160 feet cobra straight to the center or how about a dart around the tree How about a beast around the trees? A lot of different ways to skin a cat. A lot of different ways to throw these discs too. And you can make lots of different discs work for you just by adjusting the amount of hyzer 
and the way you throw and also the follow through. It's all important. So the amount of hyzer or anhyzer, as is the case, when I'm getting these flick shots to turn, you can vary the angle and you can also follow through at the end of the shot. And that will change the direction of the disc along with the disc's natural tendencies, which is really what you want to use. Okay, so lots of different discs there with varying use of hyzer, anhyzer, and also follow through to make them go through the tree and around the tree. And they're all within putting distance, so that's a good thing. Let me put them in. The dart. The beast. Cobra. Action. Next, racket jam. Okay, so the tee's back there and it's 529 feet. I had a nice first shot here with the Champion Mamba. Got me around the corner here, but still a ways away to what's called the mound there behind that famous Bluemont tree on the hill there. Very tough. Let's see if we can get through. Okay, nice drive with the understable champion Mamba brought me right there. And then my second shot with this Halo Air, which is an understable disc. I used that to get me through the trees here. I threw it with basically a little bit of hyzer, perhaps. I can throw that with some Anheuser, kind of do a Anheuser bomb and let it straighten out and get max distance. I did that in a sense, but instead of giving it Anheuser, because I didn't want to push it out this way, I just threw it a little bit closer to flat, and then it basically went through the trees here. So then it took over with its overstable characteristics and curved back around this way a bit and left me right here, very close to the silver basket, but unfortunately still quite a distance from the blue basket on the mound there. But we'll get to that in a second. More about this shot. Now, everyone hits trees in disc golf. Disc golf is an extremely difficult game. Very difficult. You're going to hit trees. You're going to have bad shots. You're not going to come out here and throw everything perfect. Of course, I'm making a video here, so I do throw more than one shot. So take that into consideration. No one's coming out here and shooting great shots every time. Not even the best players in the world. With that being said, don't have negative thoughts when you're playing, and most importantly, when it comes to trees, don't look at them. Don't look at the hazards in your way. Look down the fairway. Look at the path you want to take. Focus on that path, and believe it or not, your mind works in conjunction with your body much better than you think it will. If you just stay positive and look where you want the discs to fly, You've thrown enough discs, you know how to make these discs fly, and you can make it go through those really difficult, small little fairways and problem trees. You can do it, trust me. Don't look at the problem, look at the solution. Straight down the fairway, or straight down the path that you want the disc to go. And now another quick word about putting, with the same thought processes in mind. Envision yourself making the putt. Don't have negative thoughts going up to it. Keep everything out of your mind. And if people are walking around or in your way, tell them to move. Tell them to get out of your way. People should be behind you when you're shooting. So if there's a noisy plane flying by, wait till the plane flies by. Don't let things get in your head. Chill out, concentrate, and then when it comes time to make the putt, throw the disc. Throw the disc. Flick it as hard as you can. Put some spin on it. That way it will go where you intend it to go. That's not to say you throw crazy hard every time, but give it enough power to make the basket. If you're missing a putt short like this, you didn't throw it far enough. You didn't throw it hard enough. You should be missing 
from here to here and probably six, seven, eight, ten, twelve 10, 12 feet behind the basket at least, that means you're making an effort. The only time you want to lay up is if there's a hazard behind the basket. Then you might want to try to float the putt in or use touch to get it to go in. But most of the time, you want to spin and throw the disc. Okay, back to this third shot now. So this par shot is definitely tough. You gotta go through this tree here and you gotta avoid the branches which are basically at the height of the basket. So that's gonna make it very difficult. The best way is to just run it. Throw it straight at the basket as hard as you can and hope you get the chains and hope it falls in the basket. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip this disc. It's perfectly legal. You can also mark it with another disc in front of it. But I'm not gonna use that disc so I just flipped it. And now I can stand right up to that disc, giving me some room against this basket, and hopefully make this putt here. Okay, what did we learn here from playing number one blue at Bluemont, 529 feet? Well, we started off with the champion Mamba, 11, 6, negative 5, and 1. 11 is definitely someone who's advanced should be throwing a disc with the power of 11 but the six is good glide and the negative five is a very flippy flippy disc lots of turn and uh, the one is just a little bit of fade so I was able to use this disc to go ahead and get me around that corner I threw it turned over turned towards the corner and then just faded around slightly and got me around that first turn which is very crucial in this number one 529 footer it's very difficult a lot of trees like i said we learn not to look at the trees but at the same time don't forget when you're putting look at the center of the basket usually here there's an orange piece of tape there to help you aim so always look at the center of the basket at the orange strip or if it's not there just look at the center of the chains and that's where you want to aim and make sure you flick as hard as you can right at the center of the basket unless you're trying to use touch and just throw it in because of an obstacle behind the basket. All right, so there you go, under stable for the drive. And now we move on to the Halo Air, my second shot, air bubbles inside of this one, 13, five, zero, and three. So it's a fast disc, probably even too fast for me. But again, because of that, it's a bit under stable. Five, lots of glide. It's supposed to have no turn, so it's supposed to be stable. But for me, again, with a speed 13 disc, that's pretty fast. Probably too much disc for me even. Might turn up a bit, but it's definitely gonna fade off to the right. And that was really good for my second shot. You can vary the degree of hyzer or anhyzer, and with an overstable disc, and again, to me, this is overstable. You might have different power. This could be understable for you. A zero for the third number might be understable for you if you have a lot of power, or if it's a light disc. Light discs tend to be more flippy and therefore they're actually good for beginners and also older players. If you don't have as much power or you don't want to strain your muscles, really a light disc is really good. If you look at the distance records, a lot of those were set with the Boss, which is a great disc that I use also, but they're in the 130s. Most discs that you buy are going to be from 150 to 175, so that's very light. Get a lighter disc if you're having trouble with the discs you have and uh, you'll find that there is definitely a difference. Especially though if the course is windy, you're not gonna want a light disc most likely because it's gonna get blown around in the wind. But that being said, lighter discs again are good for older people and also good for beginners and really being able to get those discs to turn over and do what you want them to do. And now moving on to my putter, it's a pretty rare disc, 1990. It's from the La Mirada Open PDGA National Championships in 1990. So. It's a pretty old disc, and that, in a way, for me, I love it, but uh, it's a bad thing because it's hard to get these. So if you want to go practice your putting and have that continuity of getting the same disc at the same weight, it's really hard to get these. So maybe go out and get an AVR and learn to putt with those. Get about five of them and just putt, 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 right at the basket, right at the basket. Again, not thinking about obstacles, only thinking about what's in the chain. If you're intimidated by the basket, Think of it as a person. You're just throwing to a person, no problem. Make sure you spin the disc, spin the disc. If you're within 33 feet of the basket, that's 10 meters, then you cannot jump putt. That's lunge forward. You can't step forward at all if you're 
within 33 feet, 10 meters of the basket. But if you're outside of that, you can go ahead and step and jump and go ahead and putt that way. That's not my style, I never do that. This one, in fact, was much longer than my normal kind of right hand, backhand putt that I'll do. I usually limit those to under 50 feet, but this one, it was actually 72 feet. How do I know that? Well, the distance between this basket and the one behind me, see? That happens to be 73 feet, and I was about a foot in front of the basket, so that was a 73-foot putt with this disc here. And again, you're not going to make every single one of these all the time. You might not even make one for a long time. I'm out here shooting. I shoot many discs. I actually had some funny shots where uh, my actual first shot with this disc right here went right off the chains. Here, I'll show you. Take a look. So there you have it. You're not gonna come out here and make it every time, and you're not even gonna be close. It takes a lot of practice to throw these discs well. So there you go, a par, well, really probably a birdie, because that's gonna be a par four or five for most courses, but here, everything's a three. So 529 feet in three strokes, that's pretty good. And I showed you how to do it there with some technical throws, with some different discs, and uh, there's plenty of different ways to throw. Just, again, throw what works for you, throw the discs that work for you, try out different weights, and try everything you can to get better at this sport. But most importantly, practice, practice, practice. Number four here at Bluemont is one of my favorites. It's the first one I aced uh, probably a couple, several decades ago. But anyway, I have aced this one many times. It's in the short position, only 153 feet, but Lots of problem trees around, and certainly not as easy as it looks. Let's see if we can make it happen. Okay, so there you go. Good result with a bunch of different types of discs here. The Dart, the Valkyrie, the first disc I threw there, the Crank SS, the Halo Air, and my old faithful Cobra, which, like I said, one of my favorite discs. You can play the whole course with that disc. Now, I really just threw a bunch here to show you that no matter what disc, you know, from a putt approach to something like a Valkyrie or even a more powerful disc, the Crank SS. I use that because I know that I can throw it with some hyzer and it'll go ahead and do a nice right dog leg for me. And that's what it did, ended up right at the basket. And the Cobra, I threw more directly at the basket, but the Halo Air, I threw it actually with less hyzer because it tends to curve right for me anyway. So different discs, all with the same good results. Okay, so there you go. Number four, a nice dog leg right with some obstacles, but you can throw it with many discs in many different ways. Don't ever listen to anybody else. Throw what you want to throw, and if you have a style that you've already learned to throw, if it works for you, go ahead and throw that way. Of course, there's a lot of pros. You can go online and watch their form, and that's certainly good to do. Watch lots of videos. Check out my videos on the roller, check out my disc golf disc reviews, the Mamba, the Valkyrie, the Destroyer, the Cobra, the Leopard. Those are some great discs that you can have in your bag that might help your game. But anyway, go out to a field with your friends. They might have other discs you don't have, and you might love them or you might hate them, but at least you can find out in the field, and at least you can find out without buying those discs. Field practice is definitely a great way to learn your discs. And of course, check out all of my disc golf videos. Check out my Drive and Ivan car reviews, my music videos, my literal video for Chris Isaac's Wicked Game, documentaries on reality TV and poker as well. And of course, subscribe to me on Twitter and Instagram as well. Thanks for watching. I'm Ivan Katz.